Hey, what's up guys? So today we're working on a Nissan 18 horsepower upward. You know, these older Nissans are made by Tohatsu, but people tend to overlook them and you know, they think Nissan, oh, they make shitty cars, but they actually make pretty good upward motors. Yeah, it's an older two-stroke 18 horsepower Nissan. It's actually pretty clean. Um, the story I got was that a guy had it on his boat that he bought and it just stopped running. So he replaced it with a four stroke and it's just been sitting around. So, uh, so far what I've done is I've taken apart the carburetor and already cleaned it, but I forgot to record. But if you can take off this air box, there's actually two screws in there that hold the air box to the carburetor. And then on the sides here, there's just a nut here and then a nut on the other side holding the carburetor down. It's pretty easy to take apart. So I already cleaned it and so let's throw some fresh gas in it and see if it fires up. So there's a fuel filter right here and I took that apart and cleaned it. It was pretty nasty. There was like old two stroke deposits and even like a couple of bugs in there. So that's clean. So yeah, let's throw some fuel in it and see if it fires up. All right, first attempt firing this up. Give a little choke. All right, not bad. Pump the primer bulb a little bit. See the fire's back up here. <laughs> Got another upward motor here. I like these Nissan motors. So this is a Nissan 18 horsepower. Based on the decals, it's 1990s. It's probably early 1990s. But uh, it's got remote start. Let it sit for the last like five months, and so now it's not running right. So if we take a look under the hood here. So I use this little trick when I take off carbs, because usually there's a nut holding it on on these two strokes. So I'll just get a little pick and put it right at the end of that thread holding it on and then I'll spin off the nut in the washer onto this picks because I always tend to drop these. Okay, we got the carburetor here. I already took off this bowl cover and I was thinking something was going on with this float. I want to make sure that that float is completely level with the rim of here, which it is. And so you turn it, it does open, but that needle may be sticking. So we're going to inspect that and make sure there's no dirt where the needle goes. And while we're at it, we'll just get down in there and clean these jets so there's enough fuel getting through all these passages. So on these float tabs here, a lot of times this pin that's holding the tab is pretty seized up. And so I like to use these hammer punches just to punch that tab out.
we're gonna inspect under here there's two screws that hold this on and just inspect how this gasket looks as well and you can see that there's also fuel passages through here and a little jet in there that I'm gonna clean out okay the carburetor is back on and while we're cleaning might as well just clean this filter right here there's just one nut holding it on yeah if you can see at the bottom of the filter there you could see that there's some particles and some dirt in there so glad I checked this don't want that going back in the carburetor Okay, update on this Nissan 18 horsepower. So we clean the carb and it runs and it accelerates, right? But the idle is inconsistent, the RPMs at idle. And so I have two hunches of what it could be. What I'm thinking is that since the carb's clean, it's most likely this idle pilot screw right here. And so this needs to be adjusted. Typically, it needs to be turned out about one and a half turns up to two turns. All right, to determine the position that this is in currently, I'm gonna turn it all the way in. So from this position it's in right now, I'm gonna turn it in. So that was one. So that was about one and three quarters turn. So I'm gonna back it off from there and just do fine tune adjustments. Looking at these plugs, this left one's the top, this right one's the bottom. You can see how much dirtier the right one is. I think it may only be running on one cylinder. So I'm gonna do a compression test on this motor. I got on the top cylinder right now. We got about like 125. Bottom's about the same, about 125. Okay, so still working on this Nissan 18. Um, after multiple carb cleans, that still didn't fix the idle issue I had. You know, I made sure those jets were super clear in all the passages. I even put new spark plugs. These are the right plugs, the NGK B7HS-10s. Um, that didn't quite work, but I was able to narrow down that I wasn't having a spark issue. Both cylinders were getting spark. So really the last issue that I was able to figure out that resolved the idle issue was one of two things. One being the idle adjustment screw here by basically finding the right positioning of it. It was out of position. So this screw, if you back it in or out, adjusts how wide open or closed the butterfly is inside the carburetor. And so it was basically like too far open. And so the other issue was the idle air mixture screw here. And so by tweaking that to the right settings, by moving it about one eighth of a turn and just finding the sweet spot where it was idling right, I was able to adjust this to get the idle just right. So it's been like a month or two since I've worked on this Nissan with the remote start here. And uh, last time I worked on it, it was having a fuel issue, you know, one of two fuel issues. You know, one of them being, I think this fuel pump in here um, was acting up since it would run and then it would die. It, was, it seemed like it was running short of fuel. And then another issue is that I think the bowl in the float 
or the needle was sticking to the point where when I would pump the primer bulb, sometimes it would give too much fuel to the cylinders to the point where I'd have to pull out the spark plugs and eject all that extra fuel. So to kind of fix both of those issues, I got a new carb here from China, just a cheap aftermarket one. And so I'm gonna put this on, you know, it is a little bit different setup here for it. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to hook everything up, but let's try to hook it up and see if this new carb fixes our issue. So this aftermarket carb on the top here doesn't actually fit. So that's unfortunate. You can see the base here where it connects to the motor. They're different sizes. This one's way too long on the top here. And this one's more short, the holes where they fit in. Right in here, there's two uh, stemless bolts that stick out. So I think I'm just gonna swap the fuel pump and maybe like the needle and the bowl potentially and put it on this one and see if that potentially fixes our issue. It's new fuel pump now. Seems to be running a lot better. Before, about at this point, it started revving up and down at idle. Seems to be idling a lot better. We'll give it to throttle here. back to idle, it would usually die. Now it's staying running. Yeah, so I think it's still fun to fix this issue. I actually took the carb off here. The overflow on this carb here, there is like a little bit of fuel coming out. And so I think that's because this needle wasn't seated properly. Okay, so I forgot to show it on the carb I put back on, but here's the aftermarket carb that I'm not using. So basically the float and the needle weren't seated properly on my carb I put back on. So if you can see the float move, you can see that piece in there, the needle moving. So that moves simultaneously with the float. And so mine wasn't doing that. So it wasn't seated properly. So what I had to do is I had to bend this tab in here to get a better connection from the tab piece to the needle. Okay, so after putting in a new fuel pump and adjusting the needle that sat on the float seat, here's the motor running. Pretty much sums up these two Nissans. If you guys like this type of content, please like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.